Attention Earthlings! Recently, new moon research has shown that it's constantly shrinking and shaking from huge quakes. What could that mean for our natural satellite and for us? What will happen if the moon continues to shrink? Will it shrink to the size of a baseball or just, you know, explode? Put your thinking cap on because it's time to delve into some insane theories and what-ifs about the moon. 1. What if the moon doesn't stop shaking? To kick things off, here are some puzzling facts about the moon for you. It was once shaped like a donut. It's mostly made of magma launched into orbit from the surface of the Earth. It's shrinking, and it's moving further away from us with every passing year. If all this leaves you scratching your head, then let me elaborate. The history of the moon started 4.5 billion years ago. Very few photos exist. At that time, the Earth was still a young planet covered with red-hot magma oceans. At some point, a huge Mars-sized object crashed into it. The impact was around 100 million times more powerful than the asteroid that wiped out the dinosaurs from the face of the Earth. All this power launched the liquid magma into space. At first, the mass took the shape of a donut without a hole, thinner in the center and thicker near the edges. As time went by, this proto-moon started to form into the sphere we all know. But would you be surprised to know that it's not just an inactive rock in the sky, and that the moon is actually still cooling down from its explosive birth? This is exactly why it's shrinking. Every material raises its density as the temperature lowers. This leads to shrinking. Ok, the shrinking part is explained, but what about the shaking? It actually comes from the same process. You see, as the hot core of the moon has cooled down in the last 100 million years, the moon has become thinner by about 150 feet. Of course, this process wasn't easy on the crust of the moon. It's still moving and pushing onto itself, forming cracks called scarps. Near these scarps, the moon is still pretty active, trembling from the underground quakes. The giant impact hypothesis of the moon's formation is not a hot new thing in science, but it always had one big flaw. If the moon was formed by a Mars-sized object hitting the Earth, more than a half of its mass would consist of the remains of this object. Existing evidence proves that it's the exact opposite. The moon is unique in how similar it is to the Earth. On April 29, 2019, a new study was released by Natsuki Hosono and his team addressing this flaw by adding magma oceans to the proto-Earth. This explained the similarities between the moon's and the Earth's composition, since it's much easier to launch liquid magma into orbit than solid material. This is why the moon now mostly consists of material from the Earth. The study explaining the moon's shrinking and shaking processes appeared shortly after, on May 13th, released by a group of US scientists led by Thomas R. Waters. The most remarkable thing about this study is that it's based on data collected from seismometers placed on the surface of the moon by Apollo astronauts. It's mind-blowing how big those steps were for humanity after all. Before this study, scientists had no idea what caused the moonquakes. But today, it's finally explained and we don't have to worry about our moon impacting our safety. Ah, what a relief! 2. What'll happen if the moon keeps moving away from the Earth? Maybe the shrinking of the moon won't affect us, but the other irreversible process is posing a real threat. Or maybe not at all. <laughs> Let me explain. The thing is, every year the moon is getting about an inch and a half further from the Earth. Doesn't sound like much, but consider this. At the time of its birth, the moon was only 14,000 miles away from the Earth, and now it's around 250,000 miles away. If you ever rode a merry-go-round, then you know exactly why the moon is spinning away from us. The spinning itself creates a force, pushing out on the object that spins. The Earth has the same problems as the moon. The moon is pulling a tidal bulge on the Earth's oceans, but that bulge doesn't point directly to the moon. Because of the Earth spinning, it points slightly ahead of it. The combination of these powers is pushing back onto the moon, moving it away. If the moon gets far enough away, 
its crucial influence on our world will become less and less powerful. For example, tides won't be as prominent as they were before, and that'll lead to mass extinction. Fortunately, this change isn't coming tomorrow, and the Earth has lots of time to prepare. But there is another problem. The same process causes the Earth to slow down. 3. What if the Moon slows down the Earth? Believe it or not, when the Moon was forming, the Earth was spinning so fast that it took only 4 hours for it to go full circle. 4 hours in a day is great for Mondays, maybe, but overall it would be a problem. The Moon's presence on the Earth's orbit is what slowed our planet down. So the Moon has extended our day by 19 hours since its birth 4.5 billion years ago. The longer days are beneficial for life on the Earth, but it's far from being over. If you've ever asked for a 25th hour in the day, you'll eventually get it in the next quarter of a billion years. But you might not be glad about it. The Earth slowing down is not actually a great thing. The slower the Earth, the less stable it is. It'll start to wobble, and that'll affect the climate drastically. Winters will be much colder and summers will be hotter. In such conditions, nothing would be able to adapt. Still, the good news is, it's billions of years from happening. 4. What if a giant asteroid hit the moon? Let's talk about something that could happen almost instantly. Have you ever noticed how the surface of the moon is covered in craters? These are the imprints of countless impacts from meteoroids and asteroids. But what about the Earth? Thankfully, the Earth has an atmosphere that the moon lacks. This atmosphere is our space shield. If any objects try to fall to the Earth's surface, friction will be generated, setting the object ablaze and burning it to ashes. A meteoroid would have to be more than 25 feet in size to go through the atmosphere and not burn out. Anything bigger than that might cause some trouble, even for the Earth. The Moon is much more vulnerable. Almost everything that takes aim at it will hit it and do a lot of damage. But on the other hand, the Moon doesn't have a fragile ecosystem to protect, so even a giant asteroid doesn't pose much threat to it. It would just be another crater on the surface. To actually do significant damage to the Moon, like to move it from orbit, it would take an object relatively close in size to the Moon itself. And that's not happening anytime soon. Well, it seems like all the mysteries the Moon hides are not a mortal threat, at least not in the near hundreds of millions of years. At that point, we'll probably live on new planets, all with their own new moons. Who knows? Today, we're just taking our first steps outside of our home planet. The second expedition to the Moon is planned for 2024. Given the results of the previous one, I wonder how significant this new flight will be. And what do you think the new Moon expedition will uncover? Share your ideas in the comment section. If you learned something new today, then give this video a like and share it with a friend. But hey, don't go anywhere just yet. We have over 2,000 cool videos for you to check out. All you have to do is pick the left or right video, click on it, and enjoy. Stay on the bright side of life.